public defense systems as compared to other forms of the provision of criminal defense like contract attorneys and assigned counsel have long been uh, supported by both NLEDA and the private bar. And we're so pleased that we'll be able to hear some of that history from Professor Sarah Mayu from Vanderbilt University. Uh, but even so, the realities of uh, public defenders uh, that what they face is, is quite challenging and understaffing and underfunding threatens the constitutional right to counsel across the country. We'll hear more about what that actually looks like by our, in our host city of Nashville from Public Defense Chief Martisa Johnson. Um, and then we'll consider how with that history and the realities that defenders are facing, how the federal government can step in and has done so in the past. So we'll look, I'll, I'll share a bit about the ways that the Department of Justice's Office for Access to Justice and other uh, commitment that have been um, uh, exhibited can support the provision of counsel in state, local, and tribal communities, but then also turning to David Miller, NLADA's Deputy Director of Policy Initiatives, what's on the horizon with respect to increased support by the federal government with respect to counsel. The private sector after Gideon did not simply kind of turn out the lights and turn everything over to the government. Um, rather, these same private organizations and foundations and lawyers working in corporate law firms and other kind of private sector actors remain very involved in efforts to implement Gideon uh, as well. And so I'm hoping I can do a little screen share. This is the letterhead of what was called the National Defender Project of uh, the National Legal Aid and Defender Association, our host for today's event, which at the time partnered with um, the Ford Foundation to post Gideon, go all around the country and fund, assist with either establishing public defender offices or expanding public defender offices that already existed and trying to really uh, ensure that the Gideon right would actually get implemented in a robust way around the country. And I don't think anyone would argue that they, you know, fully succeeded in this effort, but nevertheless, it was a pretty remarkable investment of uh, funding and effort and initiative and activity right after Gideon all around the country. And the significance um, for us today that I think is interesting to note about this is again this theme which is that it's a mix of public involvement and also private involvement. The NLADA of course is itself a private organization of um, a kind of professional association of uh, lawyers and other stakeholders who are interested in these issues. Uh, the American Bar Association the kind of umbrella professional organization is involved in these efforts as well. And the funding is really coming from the Ford Foundation, which at the time was the, and still is one of the largest funders of various initiatives, both in the United States and all around the world. And of course the Ford Foundation ultimately is the beneficiary of um, the wealth created by the Ford Motor Company in the corporate sector and many of the people um, who are kind of involved at high levels of this had gone back and forth between the public sector and the private sector. And then if you look at, um, if you can see, I know it's kind of small font, but the people who are involved in this effort include, again, um, not only public defenders and judges and kind of public sector people that we might expect, but also Harrison Tweed. And so Tweed is the law firm that at the time was known as Milbank Tweed. He was the named partner in what's now I think just Milbank, um, but the famous Wall Street law firm. Uh, there are other names on this list that uh, Whitney North Seymour, I think was Simpson Thatcher. So they're coming from corporate law firms and from kind of Wall Street, but they historically were also super involved in um, trying to assist with the implementation and the fundraising and the institutionalization of the network of public defenders around the country that was required to make uh, the Gideon right, the Gideon ideal into a reality. You know, our clients um, traditionally are uh, impoverished or already living beyond the margins in some way. And this 
under-resourcing of our office really highlights and amplifies the wealth-based disparities that exist in our criminal legal system. Because as we know, for someone who has wealth and has resources, their process just is different for the client that does not have those same available resources. For the person who is uh, appointed an attorney in my office, for instance, and we have seven investigators to investigate our entire caseload for our entire office. That is an incredible workload for the people who are tasked with being investigators, but also a potential issue for the person who needs their case investigated, who needs things to be uncovered quickly, who needs us to find and um, you know be able to start that defense investigation immediately that ability is really compromised by the fact that we just have a sheer volume problem and we don't have as many investigators as we need. Under-resourcing really threatens our service model. It's difficult for us to identify our core values as being client-centered, as being an agency that aims to provide excellent advocacy, being one that desires to be innovative in our approaches to our public defense, one that desires to be team oriented and really one of our main components, one that desires to take our advocacy outside of the courtroom. You know, the fact that we can't have the appropriate funding threatens our ability to be able to really value all of those things equally. So what happens is we're valuing different things at different times. So when I can, I am equally excellent advocate and community empowerment, but sometimes I'm just excellent advocate, or sometimes I'm just focused on systemic engagement. And it's really difficult when we know that it requires all of those things to really provide the type of service model that we'd like to. Um, it infringes on our ability to pivot well. We know the effectiveness of public defense when officers have sufficient resources. But we also know that excessive workloads are prevalent everywhere uh, and that this means many systems in the US still fail to provide meaningful access to counsel uh, for people accused of crimes. And as we talked about, this is often compounded by public defender staff turnover when low salaries make it unaffordable for talented advocates to stay in their jobs over the long term. The Equal Defense Act seeks to address both of these problems. It would establish a new grant program to provide $250 million each year to help public defender officers reduce workloads and raise salaries. Specifically, the funds could be used to establish location-specific workload limits and then support sufficient numbers of staff to meet those limits. At the same time, public defenders in grantee jurisdictions would be required to earn salaries equivalent to those earned by a prosecutor of similar experience in that area. We know how important parity is, and so that's a really important principle that is included in this legislation. Um, the bill was first introduced in the Senate by now Vice President Harris in 2019, and in the House by Congressman Deutsch from South Florida. We worked closely with both of those officers on this over the last two years and are now preparing for a new advocacy campaign to build awareness and support for the bill. Uh, I believe here today we have some of our partners from the corporate world. Uh, really excited to let you know that in the coming weeks our corporate advisory committee will be circulating a sign-on letter that will be delivered to Congress making the business case for strengthening public defence. The corporate voice was singularly consequential in protecting the Legal Services Corporation after it was slated for elimination four times by the prior administration. And we are confident um, that it will be just as effective on this issue.